for today i just want to say thank you and and that i'm very proud that you answered our call to gather here and be a part of this process of creating uh, this publication in kenyan languages it uh, this gathering right this the, this really groundbreaking workshop is the first of its kind that ha that is being done with an attention to african languages and also their place in african literature so we we haven't seen another being done in this manner and it's really a privilege that we are gathered here today to do this it's just going to allow us to to reason together and, and ask how we can achieve meaningful literary work that is being done outside of the traditionally and well um, developed Kiswahili and English writing. We need to ask ourselves, you know, um, the difficult questions about writing, translating and publishing in Kenyan African languages. And also, it, it's, really, it's really good that we are doing this both in theory and practice. So thank you very much for choosing to make this uh, to be a part of this incredible process. And I know that it's your hard work and your creativity that will really allow us to birth this process, right? To a publication that will be defining in so many ways to the future of our Kenyan languages, and hopefully also transform how we think about and create work in Kenyan and other African languages. So like, like you all know that there's, there's a very big gap that exists when it comes to literary production in, in African languages. And um, of course it's because of the very many systematic challenges that we, that our languages are faced over the time. And when we made this call, when we asked people to send in their work, um, one, one of the th questions or one of the comments that I had was regarding to how will people read this book that we are trying to create? How, how will people read a book that has 10 different languages in one, um, in one volume? Yes, and of course, while the quick and, and easy answer is, is via translation, I also feel that the nature of the work that we are about to do is going to be quite complex. Um, but I believe we are all up to task. And um, when when I had this comment, when I read this comment, it took me back, of course, to uh, the question of how we look at Kenyan languages and why it's taken us so long to get to this point where we are publishing short stories in our different languages. Um, and we just have to accept the difficult truth that our languages have often been relegated to just being a fun to, to a function of early or lower level primary school instruction. And therefore there's just a great deal of inadequacy in how they are, the, the languages are used, right? And Kiswahili and English and other European languages have filled this vacuum, meaning that very little is being done um, to actually publish adult um, or literature in our Kenyan languages. So this kind of, this kind of negligence or violence against um, our Kenyan languages, right, just has made them not thrive or contribute significantly to our literature. And we are gathered here as a part of transforming and changing that because because of all the things that have happened, we have a whole generation of Kenyan writers, right? And who are not able at all to do any effective writing or translation in African languages. And as, as we spoke with, um, with Jane and Kimani, we've, we've noted that there's a very uh, urgent need for these kind of opportunities where people will gather together and just learn right uh, just just learn how to or gain the tools that will enable them to not only write but also translate into different Kenyan languages so um i haven't introduced myself but 
if if you've seen some of the work that we've done before right um especially with regard to african languages you will maybe maybe some of you have heard about the gelada translation project and this was um a project where we wanted to do to translate one short story into as many african languages as possible and we are actually going to be having a symposium in the coming week where we are celebrating 100 languages into which this uh, short story was translated so that was part of the work that i did before and i've also been doing a lot of work with the kiswahili prize for african literature um just promoting work in 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 these african languages i'm also working um with the gogiwa thiongo foundation which is part of how we've been gathered here today and just because of this desire to be able to do a lot of work in african languages and to facilitate writing and translation um we founded this platform and this platform is just going to be dedicated we are, we are devoting all, all all the work that goes into this will be to african languages so it's either translating into or from african languages and therefore uh the etika literary platform is going to do a lot of work and you're welcome to be a part of this whole process asante sana mnyao kilolo um kwa kuanzisha warsha hii so first of all i i must say that um i'm really 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 excited um that we have this this workshop uh, to reflect together on uh, writing in african languages um and i think that we will have a, an opportunity not only to inspire each other but also to learn from each other and that if that is the only thing that we do uh, then it is sufficient really if it is if we are able to inspire each other and to learn from each other then that is good enough but before i go in further i would like to ask uh, my colleague jane obuchi who i i we you know we've been talking online you know this technology has really messed up things eh because you you meet online so many times you think you know each other but we are meeting for the first time in this uh, in this workshop and um uh, uh, so really my sister i you know if you could just take uh, the opportunity to people to know you then i'll come back in and uh, and and take and pick it from you i think that's all right indeed it's a privilege uh to have all of us here because this is a day we have all been waiting for isn't it so we are very happy that at last it's here so i want to welcome you to this workshop feel at home feel free to interact with us with each other and i am very sure that uh, by saturday or by tomorrow you will have gained something from the workshop so my name is jenny bosiboli marando obuchi marando is my father obuchi is my husband so i want to say that my name let me use names though we don't have such so my my last three names have a meaning but as for the first one i'm not sure about its meaning and i don't care about it i will tell you later on what the meaning of those three names is eh uh, I I love telling jokes. I love telling jokes. And in my novel Latest Diary of a Kenya Nib you go through it you will find so many jokes there. Actually it's a satire. So I'm a teacher, I'm a writer, a researcher, a translator and uh, others. So I've written several works. so during break time or any other time you can have a chance of going through the works that i've displayed there on 
the desk uh, by the door. So I write in three languages, English, Kiswahili, and Ekagusi. But lately, I specialized in Ekagusi. I have done a collection of uh, short stories for children in Ekegusi, which I've translated into English. I've uh, done Chingero Chiapagusi. That is a collection of Ekegusi folk music, which I sang. I'm a very good singer, by the way. Do I need to say Menyo? So I sing. So I've sung those songs. They are in a CD. I wrote them down as they appear in the CD. And then I've translated, I have the English translation for the same. I've done a dictionary of phrase of apps, translated the CPC books grade one to five. Kegusi neki, kegusi is good. Uh, and uh, several other works. I did a song, with, I translated the Professor Kigame's song, which I sang with him, and Anansi. Genda na intue. Tosabiro koba kuao. Wende na intue. Monene uwe meganda yoto iwe. Onye toko genda na intue. Totageti kuorwa iga. Toko nyara intue tueka genda na intue. Tole ne bigoti biomo o tua bere. To isai nyo vosi obga o tua bere. To sibi aye tata. Tu orokyo vosi obga o. To ganeti obu ya obga o. Genda na intue. With the chorus singing your mother tongue. To avo lye vichabero vya. Vinto Bionsi, Vieri Goria Setore, Mio Yoya y Totuare, Tire Asore, Oto Chene, Otare Naintue. Wow. <laughs> so that's what I do. And it's very simple. I want to encourage all of us right from the beginning that we can do it. So uh, I want to appreciate African Union ECOSOC who decided to choose me as president for Young African Writers Competition 2021. So I, I want to once more request that you feel at home, just feel free to interact with us, and we are sure to gain a lot. God bless you. So, so really, um, again, to, to appreciate uh, to appreciate our sister. I didn't know that she has such a... Can we really give her another clap? I... Thank you. Thank you. Um, she has such a powerful voice. So my name is Kimani Njogu. Uh, most of my work uh, has been around Kiswahili. And it's very interesting because I've met people that I've interacted with before uh, in the room in one form or another. So most of my work has been with Kiswahili. I, 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 I basically trained in uh, Kiswahili and literature, but along the way, ended up doing linguistics um, at, uh, at PhD level. So my first uh, phase was, was Kiswahili and literature, and then Kiswahili and literature, and then PhD in linguistics, uh, which allowed me to do now, which allows me to do more of, of both, uh, both in terms of linguistics as well as in literature, and um, also focused on Kiswahili as the language as well as other African languages. Um, so the, I think some of you have read some of my, my, my works. Um, 
uh, the, I started off actually as a creative writer, as a teenager. I used to write Mchezo a Wiki for KBC. And I wrote a lot of dramas, a lot. I used to entertain Kenyans on Sunday afternoon uh, with Mchezo a Wiki, you know. And, and I wrote a lot. That's how I used to earn my pocket money. Uh, writing Cheswa Wiki, then um, then I veered into Ushikwa Poshikamana, uh, which I wrote for many years um, for KBC, and then Kuelewana uh, Nikuzungumza, which again, then we had Ushikwa Po, two, over 600 uh, dramas um, broadcast. Um, you know, so, so from the creative, from the creative space, then worked with Tanzania, to do other dramas called Mambo Bomba, Nawakati, did work in St. Lucia, again for drama, and India, and China, and Peru, and Mexico. So really designed dramas all over the world uh, for digital transformation. So that, that gives you just a quick, just a very short um, grasp of, of, the, of the creative space uh, that I have occupied. Um, but of course, what happens is, is you move on. You sometimes move from creativity to literary, literary criticism. So I, I veered on to literary criticism. And that is very dangerous, actually, because when you become a critic, you start being too conscious of the creative process, and it can undermine your creativity. So I have this feeling that the moment I started being a critic, my creativity got suppressed because I became too conscious of characterization, too conscious of symbolism and imagery and plot development. I became too conscious of these things and that undermined me in a sense. So I think that the, the trick is to really find a way of balancing so that you don't become too critical of yourself that you are able to, to do that. So, so um, so that's um, so that that gives you um, a general um, view. I think that one of the most sub substantive books that uh, we did, of course, was Ufundishaji wa Fasihi Nadaria Nambinu, which we wrote with Professor Rocha Chimera, um, and I think it's um, it went on to win the Noma Award for publishing in Africa, the first in Kiswahili, and then of course we've written um, a few other things in sociolinguistics in you know, in linguistics proper uh, and so on um, and, and, and other spaces. And now I'm writing for children. Uh, so I have Embetamu, Oxford University Press, Nita Rudi with Longhorn and others that are still coming out. So I'm now in the, I'm trying to regain my creative juices uh, through children. So, so, so that's the, that's the, the space that, um, I, of, course, of course, I'm very interested in, in, in African languages, uh, not because I, uh, it's, let me say this, that philosophically, because you have to think about the philosophy of language and the ways in which we use language and knowledge. So philosophically, I believe that our responsibility as intellectuals is really to contribute to the transformation of our communities. So I believe that completely. So I, then I move further and ask the question, given the facilities that I have, the intellectual facility that I have, what can I do, you know, to make Africa better? And I find that language is really key in the transformation of Africa so that we democratize knowledge, that we are not just producing knowledge only in English for Africa. We should be producing knowledge, of course, there's nothing wrong with utilizing English. That's what we are using now. We can utilize that. But fundamentally, we also do need to be supporting our people so that they can also access the knowledge that we have gathered along the journey of, of uh, of education. And so that, that is very important for me. And that's why I work with the three languages. So I work with English, of course, and I work with Kiswahili. But I also do work in Gekoyo, uh, which is the language that I, I also got from my parents. Uh, although 
we spoke Kiswahili as we were growing up. So I sometimes have this tension between which is my first language, is it Gekoyo or is it Kiswahili? Because even in my house, we speak in Kiswahili uh, and Gekoyo, so we mix these. Huh? But I think that that happens with many of us. So I think that from a philosophical point of view, my conviction is that we have this responsibility. And that's why I, I worked with Gekoyo, uh, with, with Gekoyo, and we worked with the Professor Ngogi Wadiongo to, uh, he was my teacher at the PhD level, because although I was doing linguistics, I also did comparative literature, and he was teaching in the Department of Comparative Literature, and I was able to take one of his units um, in African literature, alongside other, other professors. So that's how I met him for the first time, you know, and he taught me, and we were able to start the journal, um, and doing a lot of work with Gekoyo uh, while he was at Yale um, uh, teaching. And, and of course, uh, since then, we've done um, other things, you know, supervising students who are doing linguistics, African linguistics, working with them, phonology, syntax, pragmatics, all those things, um, uh, very, very important, uh, very, very important uh, for me. And then finally, um, so that we also, I wanted you to know me, I, you know, it's, I think it's important for you to know me. Because there, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that even for those of you who've been reading my books, there, there is stuff I have said which you didn't know. And I have not even touched like 30% of stuff. Um, um, but I, to also say that I also serve in the African Academy of Languages, uh, ACALAN, which is um, an organ of the African Union. And I, I sit uh, in, the, in the academy um, for purposes of um, advancing the place of African languages on the continent. So my, my docket, pro together with Professor Kiango um, and others, is Kiswahili. So we work on the Swahili uh, cross-border commission. We're trying to push Kiswahili as a cross-border language uh, across Africa. You know, and, and, and therefore doing a lot of advocacy work. But we have taken the, the, the position, which is a very important position, that the development of cross-border languages such as Kiswahili cannot be realized without the development of our other African languages. And that the first stop, the first place you go for harvesting terminology for the advancement of Kiswahili is African languages. So you need African languages for the development of of Kiswahili, and that the two languages, um, uh, the African languages and Kiswahili, of course, considering that Af Kiswahili is an African language, but we are trying to enhance it to a Pan-African language, um, um, that these languages are not in, comp in competition with each other, and that the relationship should not, sh should not be a relationship of dominance, but of complementarity, that Kiswahili needs our other languages, our other languages need Kiswahili. So that is the position we have, uh, we have, we have taken. And then of course, finally, the work that we've, we've continued to do in the country uh, for the advancement of our languages, um, either with me uh, at Chakita, I think those of you who have, who saw us starting Chakita, you know, as the founding chair, and the ways in which we pushed, you know, languages in Kenya. Um, and even the Constitution of Kenya, because I was co-chair of the Consultative Committee on Culture and the Constitution, we pushed a lot of things uh, through the Constitution, and now we are pushing things uh, with the implementation of the Constitution. So it's, it's very important that, um, that I mention these things so that you can see wh where I sit with this. So it's not just a workshop for me. It is a commitment to the transformation of the continent of Africa through African languages. And our people have a right, really, to enjoy literature. They have a right to enjoy literature. And only us can give them that literature because we have the facility of language as well, and, and creativity and imagination. We can do that and we can be trailblazers in terms of um, really setting the pace for other forms of writing. So I, 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 I wanted to share, and I am, I'm, I'm really hoping to learn a lot from you. Um, we will learn together, uh, we will share what we know, uh, but we don't have all the answers. And I think Jane and I uh, agree that uh, we don't have all the answers. We can provoke thinking, 
uh, we the answers are between us. Um, so you'll give us your name. Uh, you will also tell us the languages in which you are working in terms of um, your creativity. Two, any other expectation that you might have. So you pick just one and, and give, a, give us that. Pre school in Mombasa County. And I'm working on a, a published story by Ochieng Obunga. It's called The Measure of a Man, and in it he explores the challenges that young people face, especially with unemployment, poverty, and even in terms of education. So, so far with the story, I've been able, I, was, I sent in the draft, but I still took time to get to resource people. One who is 70 years old, he is unable to read, but he knows the Wanga language deeper. So he, he will tell me, we don't say this, we say this, we do this, this one is polite, this one is impolite. Because you realize that uh, the current, the language develops. Huh? So what they used to say back then is seen to be impolite currently. So I've also gotten to learn from him. Uh, my expectation from this workshop is to learn the translation, there are those bits that work with the translation, not from direct. Um, you can't translate word for word in the TV. So I really want to get the, the translation bit. How does it happen? Because this is the second time I'm working on a translation. The first one I did was for the creating awareness on the COVID-19 pandemic by the Mall Skin Foundation South Africa. So I feel that I'm better placed uh, with the participants now that most of you have been in the translation field. So I really want to learn from you and I really want to grow. I've written short stories in English and now I want to get into the African languages, the Wanga language and the Samia. Yes, thank you. Um, lastly, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Very happy to be here. Thank you. So, again, just a quick one. Eh? Yes. So, you, you are translating to Wanga. Yeah, to Wanga. To Wanga. But you also said uh, uh, Samia. No. Uh, with the Samia, it, Samia will come later. It will come later. Yes. I've started with my mother's side. Oh. My, mother is a, <laughs> my mother is a Wanga. <laughs> my dad is a Samia. So, I've, oh. I've decided to work with mom, eh? And she's really proud of me right now because she's like, yes, we need to let people know that Wanga is Very beautiful. Good. Yeah. This is good. So Thank from you. Wanga to Samia? No, from Later. English to Wanga. No, no, in future. <laughs> yeah, in future we are going to, I'm going to venture into Samia. I like that. Thank Very you. Nice. The other day in the meeting, uh, Professor Nkomo was saying, let's learn to use our African names. I prefer Nyatich Makini. Nyatich is my second name and Makini is my father. I'm doing my PhD in Kiswahili. I do write. Are you doing Fasi or? Uh, I'm doing Isim. I've written some short stories Jela Lawenda Wazimu, Karakana Ya Maisha, and one. Short story, the one of uh, short stories to young children, Awando and Ayando. That is my first venture in children writing, and I hope I'll grow in this. My story is about Mchambia Mgomba in Kiswahili, meaning ukicheza na tope, ukicheza na uchafu, mwisho utarukiwa. <laughs> I did that in Kiswahili. I've tried to translate that to Ekegusi. Uh, Ekegusi is tricky when it comes to translation, but in this forum, I think it can help us grow. One of my expectations is that I want to grow in that language and I want to do more in that. Kwa majina, na ito matano nyundo, na ningependa kujieleza vizuri kwa lugha ya Kiswahili. Adhani sote tunaelewa lugha ya Kiswahili. Katika matarajio yangu ni kwamba natarajia tutakuwa na kikao ambacho eh, kitakuwa 
kina manufaa eh, kote sote we siku wakubwa na siku wa sisi watu 17 ambao tumeteuliwa katika eh, warsha hii naomba kwamba mujitama eh, huu uwe ni mujitama wa manif, mafanikio mwanzo mwisho eh, riwaya nimeikamilisha ni riwaya ambayo iko na sura 14 kama sitakosea na nimechukua sura mbili za mwanzo nimezitafsiri kwa lugha ya kiduruma hiyo ni lugha ya nyumbani mimi ni mduruma salama hiyo <laughs> ni lugha ya nyumbani na nimejikuta niko mwepesi sana sikuwa nime e, tafsiri mbeleni lakini nilivyoambiwa kwamba niweze kutafsiri nikaona niko na wepesi katika lugha ya nyumbani kwa hivyo nimetafsiri katika lugha ya kiduruma na nafurahi na, 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 naomba kwamba mtaipenda zaidi kwa hiyo machache Mungu awabariki naam asante sana my name is uh, dr kuriaboro I'm also Peter but uh, the name Peter mostly confuses me it makes me feel like I'm a saint um, my phd is uh, in linguistics uh, specifically phonology i've um, when i was doing my masters in the same area i was able to interact with the professor in fact uh, he wouldn't know it but uh, in my thesis uh, he appears as a personal interview my goodness <laughs> <laughs> so so um, i i have a very poor background in uh, kiswahili same with the uh, literature but then when i was doing my phd and my masters especially my phd i found out because i was interested in uh, the orthography of gekoyo and uh, the orthography of uh, you know our local languages i discovered that uh, most people who write in gekoyo presently and even through the years have not done it fine so my interest was uh, picked uh, from that point and um when i was almost through i asked myself then how do we get our people to write properly to read because they don't read they, do, they don't write so that juncture i decided maybe i should write something and get it uh, to the people to read see if they can read but of course they had no way of measuring that one up so i wrote a few stories in english posted them on facebook and found that the response was not so good they were not long stories maybe three pages or so and then uh, the feedback was why don't you summarize it then i, st- I told myself if this is in english um would, would people be willing to read in gekoyo so i wrote a story I wrote another one posted on facebook now one of them the one that i'm writing in this uh, conference in this wa- workshop i fell on the hearts of uh, the brother took to, to the professor there mokoma if you went to the hearts of Go- of uh, dosho Now Dosu was very excited and he told me ah let me give this story to my father let's see what he says so the professor read the story and was ecstatic and so i said maybe i should keep on writing in gekoyo maybe i'll be able to get to some people so when i did that um well the feedback is uh, still people don't want to read but uh, when this workshop this idea of these workshops uh, came up um Dosho suggested to me why don't you why don't you give in your story and see if uh, it would fit in this so i gave in my story my story is uh, i'm going back to when i was a small boy we are with my brothers we are going to our grandmother every evening for storytelling and then um, they, they they give us stories you know my grandmother my grandfather and uh, the story is uh, as we are sitting there roasting maize eating githeri and uh, then they start you know exchanging banter as a story to us and they tell us how she had uh, sleepwalked so the story starts from there how she gets out of bed uh, grandfather hears her uh, follows her out she picks her water can going to fetch water and f- she actually fetches the water but uh, when some water spills on her she wakes up wakes up in the middle of uh, you know nowhere <laughs> as it were so my story stopped at that point i don't know whether i should go on but no, I, i think that's a lovely that's a lovely story she she walks wakes up after the water spills this is good uh huh yeah. so i i don't know whether i, I should... that's, what what are you expecting from uh, first of all i'm very interested mm-hmm. um 
on the question of orthography because that has really troubled me and I've written about it also. Yeah. Um, and and I hope that along the way we will have time to talk about the challenges of orthography in African languages uh, because that's a major challenge for for us writing. Did you did you did you were you able to have you been able to solve the problem of um, uh, the long vowels versus short vowels and pre-nasalization? You know when it comes. I'm to sorry, guys, but I need this <laughs> answer now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when it comes to the long vowels, mm -hmm. um, especially when they come, when uh, they, there's a long vowel in the initial position of a word, mm -hmm. there's a problem because uh, with the convention in writing is that there shouldn't be the, uh, the representation of the long vowel in the initial position of the word. So this one becomes an issue. Very good. We will, we will revisit these issues because they are very important because we are in the business of standardization of orthography, because it's it's better for us, Neil. Prof, uh, good morning. My name is Jack Odongo Ogembo. Uh, I'm a professor of literature at the University of Kabianga. Uh, my CV is not as colorful as Professor Njogu's. Nevertheless, I'm the oldest person in this hall. That can be uh, contested. That can be contested. <laughs> I, I, I can choose to take this as uh, I'm out of place, but I'll prefer to think that I'm in a special place. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not, not out of place. <laughs> now, I know I'll, I'm expected to be brief. I have not done much. I did my studies, something on ethnomedicine and art, looking at how art promotes or facilitates ethnomedicine and worked with the medicine men, what some people call witch doctors, and, and so on, and among the Luos. And out of that study, I've published a number of papers that I will not list. Today, my interest has been uh, looking at the family unit in society as a, a, an entity that matters in the nation. And my interest constantly goes to the family dynamics how we try to hold things together in the face of westernization, in the face of modernity, urbanization, and the digital effects. And people are holding on to the past and trying to put things together. So I've been running stories around the family. My story is about Oyo. Oyo is a polygamist with three wives back at home in the rural setting, but locked up in Nairobi, as all of us know, for employment. So he happens to go home once in 12 months. And you can see the challenge that that can create in the family. We learned recently that uh, out of every family, there is many men are raising children who are not actually theirs, biologically. And it is better left silently like that because it can blow up families into pieces. Nevertheless, my story is trying to see how Oyo is trying to hold things together using his wits and his skills and managing. Uh, compared to others who fall apart because they do not know. Our ancestors would have 20, 30, 5, but they were all wives under one fence and it was easy to coordinate things. Uh, that has been my interest. I have published a story before or two, but I've never written in Luo. When I started this, because you threw the challenge to me, you threw it to me, uh, it was really exciting experience. First of all, it was a bit difficult, but as I pushed on and on, uh, I thought that I was getting better. My story is almost finished. It is in Luo and English, and I gave it to a friend to translate it into Kiswahili. I think when I go back, the Kiswahili translation will be ready. I'm Doreen Nyaga. I prefer Kanemi Nyaga, a teacher by profession. I teach Swahili and theory at All Saints Shianda High School. I did my master's in the region, Kenyatta University. It was a tough journey. 
that you have not yet started my PhD. I, um, I've been an academic writer, basically very much interested in gender. I've published a paper on gender and technology in the Kikuyu community. Currently doing a book, Ambience are not Kikuyus. Yes, and yes, 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 they are not. They are a minority community. Yes, and the Kikuyu wants to make sure that you are extinct. So politically, they have assimilated us. Uh -huh. Vaccination. And uh, <laughs> uh, for this workshop, I chose a story by Arifa Chokocho. He has written on Masharti ya Kisasa, whereby he explains of this particular girl who approaches the man, and the girl tells the man that she's looking for a man mwenye maisha ya kisasa kwa sababu ya ya naye ni mwanamke wa kisasa na angependa sana kuishi maisha ya kisasa. Hapo badaye, kuna tokea mzozo na migogoro kadha katika ndoa kwa sababu mwanamke ndiye asha mua kuwa atamwendea kinyume na masharti ya ndoa. Pale ambapo mwanaume ananza kufuatilia andithi naisha naye kupanda kwenye paipu na naanguka na anatoacha katika tanuki ya tuju ya ama niaga ama alieza kupona. I've done a translation before. And for those of you who don't know what taharuki is, it is suspense. Oh yeah. <laughs> So I did a translation before of the story of Ngonge Wadiongo evolution into my first language that is Kiembu Embu language. But I'm not so confident in my Embu since I'm born of a Embu and Ambele and the two tribes are not really the same. So on this particular workshop, I look forward to Nile Nani more about the translation. Okay, I, I found that uh, Obuchi knew some Maui, although she, she just knew how to greet me, but I, I appreciate for that. Yeah, thank you very much. I am Joel Kapante Olereya. Professionally, I'm an economist in the Ministry of the National Treasury and Planning. I'm also a writer. So far, I have done two short story collections in English, uh, Lekuta and the Gods and Other Stories, published by Queenex, and uh, another one published by Elongo Publishers. Um, I think last year, after COVID struck, I wrote some stories in Ma, the language of the Maasai, the Samburu, and the Njems, uh, six of them. I have been trying to write as much as I, as many as I can, so that I can really make them up into a good, um, a larger book. So for this workshop, I, uh, okay, let me say two of my short stories were long listed for some prizes, and uh, I'm really grateful that Mukoma was a judge for the inaugural to in Falola Prize. One of my short of my short stories made the long list. So uh, for this workshop thank you. For this particular workshop, uh, one of the long listed stories is called Flames of Vengeance, published by Ita Nile, also in Nigeria. It's about men. Okay, I come from a pastoralist community where to this date there's that challenge of you are rich now, the next five minutes you are totally poor because of raids, as we can see them in Laikipia and elsewhere. So these four men went to a raid in, in Tanzania. And it was, there was a common practice where after the raid, after the animals are you know, they are rounded up and taken away. A fire is lit 
as a disruption. So those people who come, the owners of the of the livestock, if they come to try and chase the the, the bandits, they they must just have to put off the fire first, because it it endangers their children, their you know their houses. So these guys went to Tanzania. They got hold of this large amount of livestock. Then they lit a fire. But ironically, this fire now grew so large and the smoke so big that it blotted out the sun. And now they were not running away from there. They started to run away from the flames. Okay? So that is just to... It is my attempt to bring out the issue of climate change where it, it will really be difficult to put out fires probably in future. God forbid, but uh, it is something that needs a critical look. So the story was published in Nigeria and I I submitted my translated, I have translated it into Ma and I shared the original magazine where the story was featured. And uh, I have not gotten the confidence to translate into Swahili so far. But I'm really good in Swahili, only that I've, I've majored in English. So um, really, I think I've, I have also expectations. I expect that we really try to produce something that is quality, something that uh, will be used in other countries and elsewhere to really make African languages to be the good and uh, what the languages like the other languages are. So just wave in the air and say, Buhiere. Buhiere mno. I work with an organization called Zamaleo. Zamani na leo. We simply borrow from the past and make it uh, relevant today. Mostly we work with uh, oral, oral stories drawn from the different uh, African communities. And uh, most of, of our work, we... We, we, we work in uh, English and Kiswahili, and the sprinkling of our mother tongue through the songs and also the characters. And uh, the story that I'm working on is uh, a legend, the legend of George Mukabi, the one who sang Toto Singuo. He's Utaomba Mtu Mama. So, like, uh, the story is is quite fascinating because I'm uh, working on his life and his influence. Because there's this uh, genre of music, Omutibo, that came from the western part of, of Kenya. And uh, my expectation for the workshop is to gain more insight in translations and also networking. And uh, the challenge that I'm experiencing with the piece while uh, translating sometimes, uh, like uh, a word, Yakiswahili in Aingia. So I'm trying to, to remove those, do, do, those words. Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, Beverly is a writer, a teacher, a researcher, and all that. In my uh, master's, I did something on uh, syntax. I was looking at wa milishidima wa katika sentences a lulogoli. In my PhD, at my PhD level, I did something on politeness. I looked at politeness strategies in our Kenyan parliament. So I attended their discussions. And ideally, there's nothing polite there. It's only that they are being governed by the standing orders. So they appear to be polite. But in real sense, they give you that hard hit on your head. Um, my story is on uh, a journey. Orogendo. Yes, Orogendo. So this lady called Voyanzi uh, with uh, her brother called Kidiga 
have their parents living in a city, working there. And then COVID hits. Before we know so much about COVID, these two parents die. And these two kids, hawana nafasi, hawajawai kupata muda wa kukaa nyumbani, the village. And now they are forced to go back to the village. But uh, their grandmom puts, uh, keeps them together and encourages them on. As they keep on working, we anzi, in Swahili we call it furaha, she performs so well. Machayo with uh, a problem of pronounce, pronouncing L and R was all over the village, trying to tell people how a little bit on uh, language disability, that when you have that disability, it doesn't mean that that's the end of you. Your esteem should be that high and continue living as an, any other normal human being. Um, so this lady, all the preparations are made for her journey. Uh, in her dream, she sees there's uh, a light at the end of a tunnel. It wasn't easy coming up with uh, a solution. Just before she wakes up, she's like so happy that now things are working and there's a solution. She's a bit late and the grandma is worried. And this lady wakes up thinking that they are now going to get an award for the solution they've had about COVID-19, only to find that the grandma is telling her, my dear, this is the day you are supposed to travel. These journeys at the end of the day is uh, for this young lady to see that you can as well get to the destiny of where you want to be. So I'm glad I'm here. Despite having uh, written in uh, Swahili to uh, Lulogoli, a breakthrough I had this year is when my Tamthilia has been listed in the Orange Book by KICD. So uh, it's a great honor and joy to be part of this great team. As you can see, I'm wearing this Tanzanian scarf to signify the ongoing celebration of the Nobel Prize coming to Africa. So thank you most kindly for having me be part of this team. And um, currently, I'm winding up my master's in philosophy at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. I'm also a law student at the University of Nairobi Parklands. So I have a degree in philosophy from the Pontifical University of Urbaniana, Rome. I'm a former seminarian, and to be a priest. <laughs> so uh, I also have produced two children, intellectual ones. My firstborn is called Peeling the Cobwebs, born in 2020, treats tribalism in a country called Rikafa. Rikafa is an imaginary African country now, uh, the story I'm working on is called The Season of Wavas. It's the story which won uh, last month's award, best award in the US to read website, which is London based. You know? So I, I decided to translate it to Ekegusi. And in the story, we see the main character, Tom, and the wife, Maria. They divorce, you know? And then it happens that one day, Tom is coming to the church where Maria attends. And then he meets the son because he had chased away the wife when the wife was pregnant. So the wife has delivered the child. Now Tom meets the wife and is trying to give some wavas to the child. The child fishes a 20 shillings coin and tries to give to the dad. And the dad says, no, it's a gift. And then the child says, no, you, you are a stranger. I don't know you, you know, like, he says, no, it's a present, I'm your dad. And so 
the stories around around uh, family issues, as Prof already mentioned, which is something key in our society. So much will be shared in details. I'm done with the story, also with the translation. The Kiswahili version of it will be out soon. A friend of mine is doing it as well. Dadangu uh, Tafadali. My name is Sahara Abdi. Um, I come from uh, northern Kenya, the last point, I think, of uh, Kenya, a county called Mandera. That's where I was born, bred and schooled uh, until primary, class eight, that is. I am a writer, a storyteller. Um, I think I'm more of a storyteller than I am a writer, a folklorist. Um, I think I'm also a baby in the published world. I've had my first book published. Uh, which is uh, a children's story. Um, in 2020, February, uh, it's called Arawelo. Uh, Arawelo was a legendary queen in the Somali uh, story um, in the 15th century, though the story is not on her life, uh, but it's just a character that was created um, to give young girls, you know, those good quality um, leadership and strength of being a woman, a Somali woman, that is. Um, I have also another story for children still that is called A Boy Named Salah. Um, I'll give you a, a little bit of a story as to why I, it's called A Boy Named Salah. There was, it was to honor a teacher who lost his life in a bus coming from Mandera to Nairobi uh, who defended um, a non-local teacher in this case, a Christian teacher, uh, you know, questioning terrorists as to why they wanted to sing, single him out from a bus and kill him, and that is how he lost his life. So I did that book to honor him also, so he doesn't get washed down by history. Um, I have done a short story that was um, that has made to also the anthology of the Toyin Palola Prize, called and Casas. Um, all my stories, I think, have one running background that is culture and storytelling because I really believe as African societies and more so as coming from an oral community literature um, background that our power and strength and cultures lies in our languages and our stories. That the more we hold on to our stories, the more we tell them, the more we write about our stories. It's how our communities are going to stay glued together, even in the face of all this globalization and whatever it is that is happening in the world right now. The story I'm working on right now is called We Are Stories. I'm doing it originally in Somali. I'll translate it in, I have already translated it into English. Uh, I'm not sure whether I can do it in Swahili yet, but it's something I'll, I'll know as we move along the line. Um, a narrator narrating her story her experience of, you know, working um, this so-called corporate uh, works that we do and how she feels like the work is between her community because all they do is go around collecting research and, you know, um, turning the people into numbers and just seeing projects in the people. And she really hates it so much. So she writes how much she hated it and how she ends up committee, um, I, how she ends up uh, leaving that job to go start a platform where they, she just uh, tells stories to children and um, narrates uh, you know, their stories. Uh, in that story still, uh, there's one uh, aspect of identity that I try to um, touch on, not so much right on. Um, the three uh, Somali narrators in the story come from three different countries, that is Ethiopia, Somalia, and Kenya. And then they have different passports, but then, you know, they are one at the end of the day when they sit at the table, they speak Somali and they understand each other, but then they're like, you know, does it really make sense that, what are these papers in our lives? What are they, what are they doing? What are these borders at the end of the day? That is what I'm trying to tackle in the story. Hopefully, it comes out as as I intend and hope. Identity, yes. yes, the politics of identity. Yeah, my expectation really, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to interact with people I've really looked up to, growing up, reading them like you, Mokoma, uh, and so many, you know, like influence. I, I really um, 
wish to take this to the next level, wherever it is. I don't know the next level, but yeah, upwards. That's Thank that's you. my expectation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Sarah. So I like that. I really like that. And really, I want to thank you for doing the story on the boy called Salah. I think that was really um, very, very important. We have to celebrate, um, you know, those that uh, inspire you and, and encourage you to keep writing. Um, there is so many stories that have not been told. And you are right there where the stories are. So, you know, do tell those stories. Uh-huh. So you could introduce Vizuri Sana, but I'll say I'm a writer. I write in English mostly. For me, unlike most of you guys here, I'm mostly a poet. I've been trying to work on a collection of poems, which is I still shelved it because I'm still thinking about it. But basically, I write in English. And so when I shelved my collection of poems, I decided to think about translation. So for me, I translate into Sheng, because I think Sheng is my first language for me, because where I grew up, Sheng is the only language that we used to speak to each other. So for me, basically, Sheng is how I'm able to express myself very well. And so the story I'm working on is uh, Makena Onjerika's Fanta Black Current. I'm trying to translate it into Sheng, and so far, the translation is really good. I've written a story in Kiswahili, which I'll be translating in Meru. I'm a teacher by profession. I teach Kiswahili. I graduated with my master's. And when Professor Alitaja Chakita was excited because on 25th and 26th, Nimealikwa kwa Kongomano Bungoma. Na siku anajua what to do. So maybe I'll contact you. You tell me, because it's my first presentation. I'll be presenting my, my, my research. Uchanganuzi wa viangami. So I hope you are going to help me. I will help you with all my heart. Thank you. <laughs> so I will help you with all my heart because Chakita <laughs> is right here. Okay. Sawa. Thank you. Thank you so much. So my story is familiar ya Mubea. Mubea is my great grandfather. I didn't meet him, but his stories are all over. What we So I've always been interest, interested to know what kind of a man he was. Kwa hivyo ni kafanya uchunguzi wangu. And then I met some of his son, there is one son that is still alive, but the grandsons are there, so they tell me about about the about my granddad, and I was happy to see a guy from Ma, because my grandfather is like Alitoka Masai, and then Akajipata Meru, in one way or another. So in our family, you find that there are people who are a bit tall, and wako na characteristics za wa Masai. So, nimekuwa nikiuliza, why is my cousin this and this? And so, finally, I met an aunt of mine who explained to me why. Na kaniambia my granddad was from Masai. So, I have liked, atakama si kumpata, nilifraya hadithi yake. So, I decided to write about it. About it. Though, I'm a meru, but nimelelewa nyeri. So, Kimeru yangu mara nyingi mechanganyika na kikuyu. So my dad had to really help me in telling me he ni kikuyu. So in Meru we say like this. So in case you read and you find that a word that is a kikuyu there, most of the time I'm confused. But I hope tutasaidiana. Thank you so much for this platform. I'm hoping to learn a lot. Maybe one thing I'm hoping to learn from this workshop is something to do with pub publishing. I've just published one novel with a small company. And most of the time we don't know, when you have a story and you want it published, you don't know the, how to go about it. Like right now I have a paper, Nataka I publish you in a journal. I've done everything, but I'm wondering now, how do I publish it? So maybe 
that's yeah. something I would like to learn from this workshop. Thank you so much. You have all the characteristics of being a ma yourself, just looking at you because I lived in Narok. Is it, it? She has she has my blood. She has my blood. You can you can see it. So we don't carry just one identity. So we say that uh, identity. You they you know you can be Meru. You can be Maasai. You can be a teacher. You can be you know you all these things are you. Kwanza noto salamu kwa islamu salamu alikum kwa Kristo bani Yesu asifiwe. Jina ni mwalimu Kefa Unjaga ni mwalimu katika shule ya upiri ya Cheptenyo Boys in Kericho. Ah uh, nimesomea katika chuo kikuu cha Masai Mara na sasa hivi ni mwanafunzi katika chuo kikuu cha Mount Kenya uh, nasomea computer studies. Uh, kwa sababu ya mkutano huu naona chinzi ambavyo tunalia lugha kwa kweli kupitia uh, kongamano uh, walshahi naona ya kwamba wengi wetu tutakuwa anavyosema uh, mshairi mmoja kutoka Tanzania uh, Shaban bin Robert anapozungumzia kuhusu titi la mama anasema ya kwamba titi la mama ni tamu hata likiwa la umbwa Kiswahili na azimu sifayo iliyofumbwa kwa wasio kufahamu ni imbe ilivyokubwa titi la mama ni tamu hata jingine aliishi hamu lugha yangu ya utotoni hata sasa nimekuwa tangu ulimi mzito sasa kusema najua ni sawa na manukato moyoni mwangu na pua bahari na mto napita nikitumia titi la mama ni tamu hata jingine aliishi hamu hivyo basi inaashiria ya kwamba tupende lugha zetu moja hapo ya sifa za lugha ni kwamba hamna lugha bora kuliko lugha nyingine hivyo basi tunapozungumza kuhusu shengi tunapozungumza kuhusu Kiswahili tunapozungumza kuhusu Kiingereza na lugha zetu za kienyeji ni bora tuweze kuzikuza na kuzilea sasa mimi nimeandika kuhusu uh, nimeandika kwa sababu nimekulia katika mazingira ya shambani uh, siku zangu nyingi nimetagusana na watu wa shambani sija kanyaga kuulangu mjini hata siku moja lakini kupitia kwa kukipenda Kiswahili kwa sababu ndio lugha ambayo itanifusha ngambo nyingine kwa, kwa, kwa kutazama kwa umbali E, katika nyumbani kuna vijana ambao baada ya kumaliza shule e, wao wanapata on, ufadhili wa kwenda katika nje za Kiarabu. Hawa vijana wanapofika pale nje za Kiarabu huwa wengine hawarudi. Wanarudi jina. Ni nazungumzia kuhusu kweli uhalisia wa mambo. Kisha wengine wanapoenda Arabu hawarudi kabisa hatujui walikoenda kufanya nini kisha wengine wanapofika pale wanarudi wanasema ya kwamba tena sirudi tena ndivyo basi nikaipa ni hadithi yangu uh, hadithi fupi nikaipa jina sirudi tena i'm not going back nikaitafsiri kwa lugha ya kiingereza kwa sababu kuna baadhi ya uh, watu wa familia yangu kuna marafiki zangu haswa watoto wa kike walienda katika nchi za Uarabu wakufanya kazi wengine wakawa wajawazito wakajifungua mwana akarudi Afrika alipofurudi Afrika uh, yeye hatukumuona tukasema kwamba hasijua mahali alikoenda kisha kuna wengine wanapoenda Uarabuni wanasema ya kwamba huku sasa tumepota uh, asali na maziwa hatuwezi tena rudi Afrika kisha kuna wengine wanapo wanaporudi kwa sababu ya shida taabu tunasosimuliwa na wao wanasema ya kwamba eh hey, nje za Uarabu mimi si huko siendi sasa ndio hadithi yangu nikaipa anwani sirudi tena um, so um, I, want, i want us to take a short break um, uh, so that we can pause kidogo when we come back then we'll continue with the rest of the team this deep knowing each other deeper 
is, is very important. My name is Paul Nganga Mutua. So my story is about this guy called Njaga. Uh, let me say it's written, it's not my, my own story, it's written by Professor Goro Wakamau. So in 2016, this story came to me. I was, in, I was looking for stories to publish. So it came to me in English, but what I wanted to publish was a, an anthology of short stories in Kiswahili. So I translated it into Kiswahili and I was liking it because it's about Njaga, who is a young person that has left school, he's disillusioned, he, the mother doesn't even understand what is happening to this guy because when he was born, she was so happy. He was a, a boy being born after three ladies, I mean three girls were, were born. And so you can imagine what uh, in our African communities we feel when a boy is born and, you know, before it has been girls, girls, girls. I'm sure you can reckon with the stories of women who have been sent back to their homes because of not, uh, you know, being able to, 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 to give birth to, to boys. But Njaga left school, is disillusioned, he's taken into drinking, and then finally one day, uh, he comes in the morning, he doesn't want to see the mother because the mother wants to talk to him and dissuade him, uh, him from uh, drinking. But he, he somehow he avoids the mother and runs to a place where Kwa Miriam. Mulembe Swa. Swa, Swa. Mulembe Te. Mulembe Mia. Uh, thank you. Mulembe means peace. Mulembe na manisha amani. Kwa hivyo na watakieni amani, na anyi pia mnanitakia. Swa means more ama full. So is uh, more peace. Then you say more peace too. Alafu te ni kusisitiza. Then mia. Mia ni mia tu. Mia. Mia hundred. Mia mia. Mimi naitua Daniel. Simiu wanyonyi. Uh, nikajita siwa. Simiu wanyonyi, it's siwa. Then Daniel was my, is my great grandfather. Sasa ku, kwa chana na hilo jina, nafikiri I'll be banished from the family. Sababu nilipewa jina la familia Daniel. Sasa kwa chana na hilo nafikiri, tafukuzo. Uh, Natoka Bungoma, I'm a Bukusu. Everything in me is Bukusu. Even the eating habits, Niki Bukusu too. And we, Eye Wulala, the basket of unity. Kapu la Umoja. And we is a basket in Kingereza. Then uh, in Kiswahili, ni Kapu. Then, Vulala, it's unity, umoja. And uh, hadithi hii, uh, naangazia tu historia ya sisi wa bukusu, sababu wakati mungine tunahisi kwamba, kuna vitu ambavyo, wakati uh, historia ya Kenya ilipokuwa ikiandikwa, kuna vitu ambavyo viliwacho nyuma hasa kusiana na wa bukusu. Kwa mfano, nilipopokea uh, uh, address, uh, email kusiana na uh, kikao hiki tulikuwa tunashugulikia makala ya siku ya mashujia kule na nikuwa naandika makala kuhusu jama moja aliyekuwa naitwa Henry George Kere ambaye inasemekana alimuhifadhi jomo kenyata wakati ambapo mapigano ya maumau dhidi ya wazungu yalikuwa uh, ya menea sana Kwa hivyo Jomo Kenyata kakimbilia Bungoma kisha akaifadhiwa kule. Na historia hiyo haiku, haiku andikuwa popote. Na nilipopata uh, mwaliko kusiana na hili, nikasema basi nitaandika kusiana na mambo ya kihistoria. Namna jamii yetu ilivokuwa ikichagua viongozi na namna ambavyo ni tofauti sasa hivi. Kwa mfano, zamani walikuwa nasema kwamba ili uwe kiongozi, Lazima uwe umeoa na umekwenda 
umeiba ngombe kutoka kwa jamii jirani hapo wakati wote kwa tunaibia wateso sana tesos we call them vamia kwa tunaibia sana sasa ili wewe kiongozi lazima uibe kule kisha uje uoe ndiposa uh, uwe kiongozi lakini sasa hivi kule kuiba ngombe uh, wazee walisema kwamba sasa hivi kule kuiba ngombe walikuwa wanakupatia mkuki na ngao lakini sasa hivi ni kalamu ambayo ni mkuki na karatasi kula wakati huo walikuwa wanaangazia vita lakini sasa hivi wanaangazia elimu na wakati huo walikuwa wanachagua wazee lakini mambo yamebadilika sasa hivi unaona vijana pia wameibukia kwa sababu ya elimu kwa hivyo hiyo ndiyo hadithi niliandika katika kibukusu kisha nika translate kwa Kiswahili na Kiingereza ni daktari mwana wa mutonya uh, it's an introduction yeah um a uh, brief one i'm going to be very brief uh, here today um uh, thanks so much for for this opportunity i think for me it's a sort of a homecoming yeah homecoming in at different levels um i haven't been home in three years so i mean starting from there so i'm so happy to be here you know in this community of writers uh, number two homecoming in the sense that um this the story that i submitted you know it's 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 like my very first um uh, story in in any of the languages in kikuyu english is my very first you know so so i'm happy to be here to learn from 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 most of you uh but the interesting thing is that i've been writing in kikuyu for quite quite a while and that's why i brought this book with me yeah this was my introduction to gugwa diongo when i was about like six, seven, eight years old you know uh so i've been writing and reading in kikuyu all my life you know so um so so um uh, being here to present my first story i think i think for me it's 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 it's, it's wonderful uh and number three, i think uh, different from what uh, professor kemani said um i've been more of a literary critic you know so so it's my first step you know as a writer you know i'm i'm, I'm doing my very baby steps as a writer uh much as i've written in kikuyu i've written lots of non fiction uh, i was translating for for um there is a, a magazine which was banned sometime by moi you know um by the moranga catholic diocese uh i, I in oro yes yes uh, I, i was writing for them and i did translations of um uh some publications from the kenya human rights commission so so i've been into trans I, in, i've been in translation for quite a while uh but this is a first for me uh because um and i'm finding it very interesting you know translating non fiction work and translating fiction work i think they are two different things for me yeah uh my story i was planning on uh, uh writing an allegory maybe i don't know if it came out as an allegory uh it's been inspired mostly by the politics of the day you know uh and and uh the kikuyu version the title is wadahu hu na dore kamoro waite which could be like wadahu hu and his brother doreka you know but i changed the title you know in english and i'm talking about the whispering darkness uh, uh because i thought probably because i'm using lots of allegorical names you know, the wadahu hu and doreka and kemugunyo you know are, are, are deep names you know uh if i put that in the title it, uh, the meaning could be lost uh, as well uh la mwisho i'm so happy expectations um yesterday over dinner i think i was, I was talking to ganga you know and uh, and i'm so excited that he promised you know to translate my work into swahili i can i can do that in swahili but i'm not so confident you know uh, of my kiswahili um um I, I i can do that but but i think ganga will do will do a, a, a great job here and, and i think lastly you know my short story is based on a poem that was published um this year in south africa uh it was published in kikuyu and it was very interesting how this came about you know um 
Uh, last year, we started having like very informal Zoom discussions. What when you're called diaspora, you know, you miss home, you need to meet as friends and talk about stuff. So we were there and Mukomo was there and uh, Professor Gugatiung was there and so many other people. And I decided to read the story, my, my, my poem to them, you know. And I got an approval from Google at Yongo, you know, and Mukoma, like, wonderful, wow, you know. And that's why I thought, wow, so I could publish, you know. And that's how my, 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 my story was published in South Africa. Interesting enough, I had sent this story to a publisher in Kenya. And they refused to publish because they wanted a translation of the poem. And I refused. No, I didn't, I didn't, because if I, up to now, I haven't translated this poem because if I do that, you know, the, 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 the play of words, the musicality, you know, would get lost, you know. So I refused. Then uh, Sipiwa Mahala is a mutual friend, Mokoma and I, yeah, I schooled with him in South Africa. And I told him about my poem and he published it, you know. So, so uh, homecoming, I think for me, is the key word for me. Asante Nisan and Ashkuru. I'm also a writer. Uh, yeah, so that, 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 to me, this is very, very meaningful, you know, because I'm also inter inter interested in translation and translation theory. But then I'm also the co-founder of the Kiswahili, the, the Mabati, you guys know the, 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 the Mabati Kiswahili Praise. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, yeah. So, yeah, so, so to me, this is like a dream, you know, it's like a dream that's coming true for me. Um, and um, I'm hoping also we can create theory out of this, you know, because in a way, what we're doing here is, is, is I, I think it's very rare, you know, unless, you know, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Chakava might disagree, but, <laughs> but, 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 but it's very rare that, we, that you get to witness when, when history is being made. So, and I think what, what you guys are doing here is actually history, right? Um, because... Okay if, okay, okay, if we do it well, we'll end up with, uh, you know, translations theories around African languages. Uh, we'll end up with different concepts. We'll end up with um, a different way of, of thinking about how, even, how African languages relate to each other. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so, so I'm, I'm just humbled and happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how people who don't read survive in this world because it's the best thing you can ever do, just reading, you know, and, and, and inhabiting other spaces.